We're going to talk about projectiles in this video. I'm going to give you a little context first. This is uh, United here. They're trying to score a free kick against this horrible baby blue team. Well, they need to get the ball a certain height so that it beats the wall. And we want it to nestle in that bottom corner, which obviously depends upon this distance here, distance x. Everything in this you can work out if you know the velocity with which the ball is kicked and the angle from the horizontal angle theta um, it is kicked. You're going to need to apply everything you know about vectors in two dimensions, resolving vectors in two dimensions. That's using trig skills. Okay, um, and you're going to need to be really sure about your equations of linear motion, your SUVAT equations, and you're going to need to be able to uh, process a lot of data and work through quite a complicated method. So you need really good calculation skills to do well in these questions. They're usually worth a lot of marks because there's quite a few steps in them. I've just simplified the situation down here, and I'm presuming we're being told the initial speed and the angle at the horizontal, and we need to work out the distance it travels and the height it goes. The key to um, solving any projectile question is always going to be working out the time of flight. That's your kind of target. Whenever you see that, think, right, I need to work out the time of flight. How can I do that? Let's just use our simplest of our equation of motion, first of all. That's V equals U plus AT. Okay, well, we know A. A is actually not A at all. A is G. Gravitational acceleration, isn't it? And we need to work out V and U in the Y dimension. So I'm just going to put a little subscript Y there. Well, uh, V in the Y dimension is V at this point here, the top of the flight. So we know that's zero. That's fine. What about U then? Well, U is actually the vertical component of this vector here, this velocity at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So it's this vector here. How do we work that out? Well, think, imagine you are swinging open the angle, so you know it is sine vertical. If you've got the horizontal, angle is the sine. So u in the y dimension is 4 sine 30. Uh, and add g, which is minus 9.81. We'll make your mass work. And you want to work out t, so that's fine. So now let's just um, simplify that down a little bit. On this calculator, you need to do 30 and then hit sign and then times by 4. So that's 2, that's fine. Minus 9.81 t is equal to 0. So now we can rearrange 9.81 t equals 2. So t is 2 over 9.81. Easy peasy. So that's that 0 0.20. Um, I'll work to 3 6 6 because that's what my data is. Two zero four. Yeah, seconds. Now that's not the time of flight, that's the time to the top. Okay, we can use that to work out the height. The total time of flight will be twice that. So remember that when we get on to working out the horizontal distance travelled. So we've got our time taken to get up to the top of the parabola then. Um, and now we can use the equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Um, now some of you will have noticed that you could actually go straight to using V equals U v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Yes, that would allow you to work out the height, but I do prefer to think of working in, out these parabola questions in terms of the time. I think that's normally the key to unlocking and making sure you understand what's really going on here. So I'm going to carry on working this way. You're very welcome to do whichever way you like. Um, so S in this case is the height. That's what we want to work out. And U, if you remember, the vertical component of that was 2 ms to the minus 1. Um, time 0 0.204 we know all of this data now we 
we can go for the calculator. So that's, there you go, the height 0 0.204 meter. So this um, is obviously not a great example in the context I gave you, but just to show you that it would work with this, I just remember um, working with any of these uh, equations of motion is just all about being disciplined about uh, which quantities are which related to this. So remember the V is in the Y direction, the U is in the Y direction, A is actually G, which is negative, don't forget. Um, you, you'll have no trouble working through these uh, sums. So V squared is zero, because we're talking about the top of the flight where the vertical velocity is zero. U squared, we said was two squared, U, U was two, so two squared, plus 2 times 9.81 and the displacement we're talking about is the height so that's fine um, I've missed out my minus, talked about discipline and missed out my minus there so now we can rearrange um, this is going to be minus 4 if you like uh, plus 2 times 9.81 minus 19.62 H uh, do the division minus 4 well just sack off the minuses now I suppose over 19.62 is our height and yeah I get the same result 0.204 meters. So not very high. More like probably launching a marble in the lab rather than um, a kicking a football over a wall. So the last thing to do is just to calculate x. Uh, that's going to be pretty simple. We're just using our good old relationship um, speed is distance over time or velocity is displacement over time. Um, that rearranges to displacement is velocity times time, of course. And in this case, our displacement is x. Our v is our v in the x dimension. We're going to need to resolve that from the data we've got down here. And our time is actually twice this one here. So I'm just going to stick 2t because that works with my data here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. This time you're going to the horizontal component. So imagine you're closing, so you think cos, so for cos 30 is, um, sorry, times 2 times 0.204. I tend to prefer to simplify things before um, calculating them, just simplify them in little chunks and work through sections. I think that leads to me getting less confused, uh, especially in this calculator we have to type 30 cos and then times it by 4. Uh, 3.464 um, times 0 0.408 just simplified that the distance this marble would travel uh, in this parabola. Uh, again, just remember it's about the discipline, making sure you know what quantities you're talking about, whether they're horizontal or vertical, making sure that you're multiplying that time by two because it's the time there. You're going to recognize uh, a question like this because they will say something like ignore air resistance because in the reality, of course, it won't get quite that far because uh, it will have slowed down by the time it reaches uh, this point here and therefore uh, V would be lower 
uh, than the 3.464 that we've got here. I really hope they help. Do remember to like and share. And if it did help you, then please do subscribe because there's more A-level um, physics videos coming.